Hey hockey player, in this video I'm going to be running you through an aerobic capacity workout. Now with this training session we are going to be targeting what's known as the aerobic energy system, meaning we're not training your anaerobic energy system. The big difference between these two is when it comes to your anaerobic training, you want to go all out to failure, feel the burn like crazy, that means the quality of the workout was high. However, with an aerobic session, which is what we're doing today, the objective here is to actually train at about a 50 to 60% intensity. So if you had an intensity level, one being sitting on the couch and 10 being all out madness, you want to hang out in between a five and a six. You should have a sweat going, but you should never achieve true and complete failure. That's not the objective of this workout. The reason why is because the training stimulus matters. Aerobic training, when trained at the correct intensities that I'm discussing right now, improves your vascular networks, improves oxygen supply and delivery to working muscles, and actually also improves the volume of blood that your heart is able to pump out per beat so that more oxygen can get to working muscles and more fatigue byproducts can be recycled out of your working muscles. Long story short, this helps you catch your breath way faster in between shifts, but only if you do it right, okay? How this workout is gonna work is you're gonna be doing exercises for time. So I just want you to stay in a flow state of 50 to 60% intensity, and you're gonna do each exercise for 60 seconds, four in a row, followed by a 60 second rest. You're gonna do that four different times. So four exercises and then 60 seconds of rest equals five minutes of work. And since you're doing that four times, you've got 20 total minutes on the clock. So this thing is just gonna count down. You're basically gonna be going nonstop, staying in that flow state until you achieve those rest periods. When the clock hits zero, you're done the workout. Let me do, or let me show you some exercise demonstrations with Kevin here now. Your first four exercises are going to be jumping jacks, just your regular jumping jacks. Make sure you get a nice full range of motion. Second exercise, you're going to be dropping down into the crab walk. Crab walk, keeping your butt off the floor, keeping your core nice and contracted. And it doesn't matter how many ways, or sorry, how many steps you go backwards, how many steps you go forward. Just stay in the room that you're in and keep moving. After that, you're gonna go into lateral shuffles. So here, just nonstop movement. Make sure you don't cross over your feet. These are shuffles, not crossovers. Once we finish 60 seconds there, you're gonna move into butt kicks. Keep your hands just stable in front of you and kick your butt on every single rep. Once you've done all four of those, we're gonna do 60 seconds of rest and I'll show you the demos for your next circuit. All right, you better get yourself ready, okay? We're gonna start with 60 seconds of non-stop jumping jacks. Get ready in three, two, one, let's go. All right, non-stop jumping jacks here. Really try and keep a nice, even keeled pace where you're working, but you're not totally exhausting yourself. Remember, aerobic work is different than anaerobic, and the correct training stimulus gets us that correct adaptation that we want so that we can become the best hockey players we can possibly be. 30 seconds is down. I want to remind you through this whole session, control your breathing. Okay, you are in control of your breathing as much as you are in control of your pace. I don't want you to be way exhausted because that's when we get into the world of anaerobic training rather than aerobic training. 10 more seconds here. Really reach with your arms and legs, almost like you're trying to get a mobility benefit out of this as well. Two, one, crab walks right away. No rest in between. You're going right into crab walks. I like what's known as chasing blood around the body in that we are doing total body movement standing but then total body movements on the ground. When you chase blood around the body, you actually force the heart to work a little bit harder because now it's sending a lot of blood to the triceps and shoulders where that wasn't being hit at all during the jumping jacks. 
forcing the heart to work a little bit more creates more cardiac conditioning and that is really going to help you out in the ice. So keep that pace going. Make sure you don't go too fast because crab walks can actually be quite difficult. Uh, back in the day, we used to play crab walk soccer as kids in gym class, and you couldn't go too hard for too long because it is pretty exhausting and you really feel it everywhere in your body. In four seconds, we're going to jump up to lateral shuffles, and let's go. We're up, we're doing our lateral shuffles here. Keep that nice, consistent pace going. Always controlling the breathing here. 60 seconds of every single movement. The big difference between anaerobic and aerobic training is aerobic creates energy in your body with the presence of oxygen, whereas anaerobic creates energy in the body in the absence of oxygen. That's why you could hold your breath and sprint and still get to your destination, but then you create an oxygen debt and you kind of got to catch up by the time you get there. Whereas aerobic training trains your ability to keep moving no matter what and not lose your breath. Anaerobic and aerobic conditioning are both important to be a completely conditioned athlete out in the ice. 10 seconds and then you're going to move into your butt kicks. Now for the butt kicks, we're just going to stay in one place. I know you've probably done them before where you've been moving. All right, into the butt kicks now. Stay in one place. Just stay there. Keep that pace going. Catch that breath. Stay in control of your intensity. I know as an athlete, you're an athlete. You wouldn't be here if you weren't a killer athlete. And if you've got a mindset like mine, sometimes you just want to go all out. But there's a difference between training hard and training smart. Lots of times we want to go hard than what's actually intelligent to do. In this type of training model, you need to remember to train smart and stay in that intensity zone, which is the whole purpose that we're here for to strengthen and condition the aerobic system of the body. In 15 seconds, you're gonna get a 60 second rest period. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, for the next round, you're gonna be doing standing oblique crunches for 60 seconds, elbow to knee, alternate, and then into your modified skater lunges. Don't go all the way down. Make sure your toe touches the ground with each rep. Down into the mountain climbers for 60 seconds. Do your best to get your knee on the outside of your elbow for every single rep. Then you're gonna be moving up into the high knee march. In one place, opposite arm, opposite leg, moving with every single rep. You got 15 more seconds of rest. So take some deep breaths, grab a drink if you need to. We are going to be going into the oblique crunches in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go, right, get right into it. This oblique crunch, yes, we're training the aerobic system. Yes, this is a conditioning workout. I still want you though to have a mind-muscle connection with your obliques. Your obliques are lifting your leg up and your obliques are also bringing your upper body down. It creates a whole different level of muscle activation when you have that mind-muscle connection as opposed to just kind of bounce with it. Our bouncing work, that's for the marching, that's for the skipping. We're not going to be doing that with the oblique crunch because we want to train our core at the same time. The obliques, they're cross-directional in the body, so they're very great for improving shot power out in the ice. And since we're conditioning the obliques here, it's a great way to make sure that you're going to have as hard of a shot in the third period as you did in the first period. Five seconds, then you're gonna be going into the skater lunges. Begin, let's go into the modified skater lunge. Keeping that mind-muscle connection with the body, with the lower body here. Now, a, a note on pacing. You don't need to keep pace with Kevin. Remember, this is to be done at 50 to 60% of your self-perceived intensity. If it's slower than Kevin, 
at the same pace as Kevin or even higher than Kevin. That's all A-OK. -okay. Just make sure you're being honest with yourself. We want to train smart here. So that subjective rating of 50 to 60 percent is absolutely key to getting the most out of this workout and targeting the vascular networks and heart the way in which we want to target them here. You've got 10 seconds before we drop down into the mountain climber. Four, three, two, one. Right away into the mountain climber. Let's go. Mountain climber, knee touching or not touching, just on the outside of the elbow on every single rep. I love the mountain climber because we're isometrically training the upper body while we're dynamically training the lower body, yet getting that knee beside the elbow on every single rep, that really helps open up the hips and groin. And in hockey, opening up the hips is key to improve your stride frequency, whereas training the groin through deep ranges of motion is key to preventing injury. There's a lot of bang for the buck happening here with the mountain climber, but due to the dynamic nature of the movement, it can be difficult to control your breath. So make sure you've got that breath control, okay? You're still pacing and you're never holding your breath, even though it's kind of a thumping movement. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and you're up for the high knee march. High knee march, breathing. Don't forget to breathe. This is where you can really catch your breath after those mountain climbers. We're chasing blood around the body. We're training to be the best hockey player we can be. Do opposite arm, opposite leg pumping, just like you see Kevin doing here. You wanna correct yourself if you're ever doing it on the same side. This is something that you don't do during skating, so you don't wanna do it in training, okay? Practice doesn't make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. Technique is absolutely key to making sure you're training hard and training smart at the exact same time, okay? 15 seconds to go, and then you got your rest period. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, rest, 60 seconds. You're doing an awesome, awesome job so far. Take your deep breaths, get a drink of water if you need to. Really try and refocus yourself because I've got four more exercises waiting for you. You're gonna be starting with the standing alternate toe touch where you're just going to be balancing and touching your opposite toe with your upper body. Then you're gonna move into plank ski hops where you're gonna be getting your knees on the outside of your elbows on every single rep. Then you're gonna jump up into lateral high knee skips, moving laterally with those skips, perfect. And then rotational jacks where you're gonna open up the lower body, touch the opposite toe exactly how we're going to be doing it. You got nine seconds. Get yourself ready. Take your final deep breaths here. Three, two, one, let's go. Standing alternate toe touches. Now this is a difficult, difficult exercise. I'm sure you're noticing right now, especially when it's placed in the middle of a workout. But I absolutely love it because we're training the aerobic energy system at the same time that we're training coordination, balance, and ankle stability. Not many things scream elite skating more than coordination, balance, and ankle stability. I mean, that's edge work, edge work, edge work. So when you're training this in a fatigue state, you're essentially training the body how to have great edge work even when you're exhausted. That's a real key component to doing real sport specific training is not just training to fatigue, but doing technical movements in fatigue so that you can still do technical movements when you're fatigued in a real in-game setting. Five, four, three, two, one, plank ski hops, let's go. Down on the ground, pace yourself with these, okay? You've been warned. This one can absolutely exhaust you if you try and set the pace too high. Don't forget, this one's really good at disrupting your breathing as well, just like the mountain climber was. So control that breath, pace yourself, 
and then you're going to do it absolutely perfect, all right? You're doing an awesome job so far. Your main point of concern here is to pick a pace that you know you can keep. Don't try and go hard in the beginning and then taper off slow by the end. That's not the point here. You want to pick a pace you know you can keep and then be in a flow state. Every movement should look fluid. It should look like water. You're just flowing with every single movement. Seven seconds before you're going to go up into lateral high knee skips in three, two, one. Lateral high knee skips. Let's go. Catch your breath. Pace, set your pace accordingly. Get that knee up on every single rep. We don't want the low knee here. We still want to get a nice and high. Your job is to pick a pace that you can remain technical with. That's real key. And that's a great cue to always remember when you're doing aerobic work. Pick a pace you can remain technical with. Because we do not want to allow our exercise technique to drop off under any circumstances here. 20 seconds. Deep, full lung breathing, right? Give your muscles the oxygen that they need. 10 seconds. Then you're going to move into rotational jacks. Another coordination-based movement here. Upper body and lower body doing different things. Let's go. Rotational jacks. Boom. In and out, rotate. In and out, rotate. Perfect. Upper body are doing different things. We're getting a lot of the same benefits here that we're getting out of that alternate toe touch. We're asking our body to do difficult motor tasks in a state of fatigue. Uh, you're at about the halfway point here of the last exercise of this circuit. You've got one more to go after this. 25 seconds until your rest period. Keep your pace up. Make sure your arms are staying high. Make sure your out portion of the rotational jack is nice and wide. You're not sacrificing any range of motion here or technical execution at all. Six, five, four, three, two, one, and you're resting. Relax, shake it out. Deep breath. Fill your lungs, fill your belly with the breath. Do anything and everything you can to get that heart rate back down. Consciously calm down, all right? Your last series of movements is going to be seal jacks, in one place inchworms, squatting to pivot, And then the arms overhead, high knee march. Perfect. 15 seconds. 10 seconds. Last series of movements, you guys. Three, two, one. Let's go. Oh, right to seal jacks. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Seal jacks, exactly the same as jumping jack, but we just have our arms going out sideways this time. Instead of upward, a little bit more upper back activation happening with this movement. Thirty-five seconds to go. It's your last round here. You're getting all these exercises done, and then you are done for the day. We only got four and a half minutes left on the clock. You're going to make it, all right? Let's get this done. 20 seconds. Breathing, breathing, controlling. You are in control of your breath. You are in control of your heart rate. You are in control of your pace, okay? Keep that in mind. Five, four, three, two, one. In one place, inchworms. Let's go. Chasing that blood around the body, making the heart work. The inchworm's difficult. This exercise really trains your triceps and shoulders, but trains your core a lot as well. That walking out and then all the way back up, 
The amount of spine stabilization required during this movement is very high, and that's the core's primary function anatomically, to stabilize the spine and the pelvis. So anytime we can challenge that a lot, we know we are getting what's known as core stability. Core stability really helps you stay strong on the puck. If you ever run into someone on the ice and then you're the one who kind of bounces off, <laughs> that person has core stability and it keeps them strong on the puck. 10 seconds to go. Come on, do this right and you're going to be the one people are bouncing off of. Let's go. Three, two, one. Squat to pivot. Squatting down, pivot only one side. Perfect. Your planted foot, your toe should remain forward. And your pivoting foot, the goal is to have it at 90 degrees. So you're going to point that thing all the way to your other foot. This is a great exercise because the pivoting foot is internally rotating the hip, whereas the planted foot is creating hip external rotation. So you're getting internal hip mobility as well as external hip mobility at the exact same time with a dynamic movement pattern. So edge work, edge work, edge work, elite skating. This is what we're after. We're really opening up those hips while conditioning the body at the same time. It's rare to find an internal and external hip movement exercise at the same time. Makes this exercise a beautiful option for this workout. Get ready. Arms overhead, high knee march. Let's go. You're right into it. This is the last movement of the day, everybody. Keep that pace. Maintain that pace and maintain that breathing. Keep it up. Keep it up. Let's go. Get that knee up with every single rep. Control your breath with every single rep. Stay dynamic and stay athletic. Your first march should look like your last march. You want to maintain that energy and you want to be moving nice and fluid. Keep that flow nice and good, nice and athletic. All right? 15 more seconds. 10 seconds. Let's go, let's go. You're almost there. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome, awesome job. You did it. You're out of here. Nice work.